On this episode of It's Me or the Dog, the claws come out when Victoria meets four single girls <laughs> battling over their four little dogs. It's unsanitary. <laughs> Sick of the way you treat me. I never talked to you. Susan thought she was getting three new roommates, but ended up with more than she bargained for. I'd say that is disgusting. Now the dogs have contaminated the household and their friendships. And clean it up. I'm going to. Between Bailey's marking. Bailey, no. Maiden and Lucas pooping. I haven't cleaned it. And Nibby's aggression. Susan is at her wit's end. I feel bullied in my own home. Will Victoria be able to clear the air? Oh my, you, you all got to grow up. Or will desperate times call for drastic measures? I would like to take your dogs away and give them to people who have the time that they need. Victoria Stillwell has been training dogs in both Great Britain and the United States for nearly 14 years. Today, she's on her way to meet four roommates and their troublesome dogs. As a dog owner, it's your responsibility to take care of and clean up after your pet. Leaving your dog's filthy mess lying around will not only damage your health, it could also ruin your friendships. My name is Stephanie, and I live with my dog, Bailey. Stay in my lap. My name is Sarah. I'm 24. I moved here with Nibby and Maiden. Good girl. My name is Jessie Wheeler. I'm 24. My dog is a little chihuahua named Lucas. <laughs> My name is Susan. I'm 23. I live in this beautiful townhouse with three other girls and their stupid dogs. Before Victoria begins training, she'll spend the day observing the issues at hand. Oh, oh God. <laughs> I wanted to get a handle on the issues, so I sat down with the girls and asked them to tell me what was going on. So what's what's the deal? Uh, well, this was this was my house originally. I've been here for two and a half years. I found everybody on the internet. Before the dogs moved in, this house was peaceful. It was always clean. And since we have these dogs now, it's, it's an absolute and utter mess. It's disgusting, and I hate coming home every day. There's a bunch of stuff going on. Um, there's peeing and pooping. You can't even keep up with it. So there's a lot of toileting going on inside the house? Yeah. All right. And do you have a dog? No. You don't have a dog? <laughs> Never will. Obviously, this arrangement is causing some problems. Yeah, sure. To say the least. Absolutely. How are you feeling about it, Susan? I can see it's affecting you. It's caused me incredible amounts of stress. I don't like coming home. It's almost, you know, them against me. I feel bullied in my own home. I'm pissed off. I'm hurt. I'm at my breaking point. I can't take it anymore. Yeah. I did notice that when Victoria was asking Susan questions that Sarah and Jesse were snarking a little bit. And I personally feel it's a little bit childish. You know, it's a little condescending. Are you taking it seriously or? Oh, yeah. How does that make you guys feel? I think there's a personality conflict. We don't speak. So wait a second, you're living in the same house together, but you don't speak to each other. I prefer not to speak to her. The dog's behavior has ruined the relationships between the girls, especially between Susan and Jessie and Sarah. Your dog is ridiculous. And you say, oh, I'm so negative about it. And you are negative. No, I'm a realist. I am too. I'm a too. realist. No, you're just a bitch. I think she just needs to hate someone, and I'm just an easy target. I'm sick of the way you treat me. I, never I should be able to, to tell you that Lucas yeah. pooed on the wall Absolutely in our no. bathroom. That's fine, but it's, yeah. And that's you leave it for issue. days. For days. I'll it's clean it as soon as I can. Obviously, it's unsanitary. It's this disgusting. This whole entire place is unsanitary. Yeah. This whole entire place. So get it under control. Maybe if you took the time and effort to walk yeah. Lucas. I in walk the morning, him every morning. You at, have said you in the interview that at, at times you won't walk him. At times I don't, I said at, at times I don't walk him fully to be able to go poop and right. therefore he poops on the wall and I know that. In the bathroom. And yeah, I've thank said you. that. Pretty quickly I saw the hostility between some of them. Okay, I'm uh, here to observe today so I want to see everything. If I can have a tour of the house, let's start. Absolutely. There. Okay, good. 
with a clear idea of the human issues she'll have to deal with. Victoria now wants to see some of the problems the dogs have been causing. I want to see the house for myself, and I want to see all of the places at the dog's toilet. First stop on the tour is Jesse's room, where Stephanie's dog, Bailey, likes to invade and mark his territory. Bailey, out, no! Bailey's never really had any problems before, with pain especially, but since we've been here, he's been pain marking. Basically, he always will mark right where your foot is. Oh. Um, it's not there. <laughs> Bailey is marking in Jesse's room. He's in competition, especially with Lucas around the other male dog, and that's what he's doing. He's scent marking over Lucas's scent. Next, Victoria gets a tour of the common areas of the house. It would be the perfect place for a barbecue to have friends over. It's embarrassing to have people out here, and it's just a, a constant mess. The patio was covered in poop, and not just stale poop. This was poop that had been there for many weeks. I'm not taking any responsibility for this. No, I'm sure it's not you coming out here and pooping. Yeah. I have to say, that is disgusting. And the mess isn't limited to the outdoors. This is one of the favorite spots for all the dogs. This is probably from Maiden. Lucas, Lucas is, is over there on the wall. That's been there for probably about a month. Lucas, Jesse's dog, likes to poop high up. Dogs don't just mark with urine, they also mark with poop. The higher up the poop, the bigger the dog. And it's, you know, it's a problem. If the landlord knew about that, it could mess up the paint. And it goes all around these couches. There's some over here, there's some over there. Where do you even start? That's what I'm thinking. It is not sanitary. This house is the most disgusting place I've ever been in. The final stop is Sarah's bedroom, where she keeps Nibby and Maiden confined during the day. Maiden likes to poop underneath the bed, so I don't know what it is. She has something with going maybe in private. <gasps> yeah. I cannot believe what I saw. I don't think I have ever seen such a disgusting sight as weak old poop and piles of it under somebody's bed. I don't know how she sleeps. So you have poop under your bed, the bed you sleep in. Yeah, you have poop it's under. disgusting. And so you leave it. It's just so hard to clean, and I'm gone all the time. Sarah will let her dog stay in the room up to 12 hours in a day. Won't walk them at all. Maybe she's too tired. Next, Sarah takes Victoria out to her private balcony. All the big spots are throw up because I changed their food and they got really sick a couple days ago. I think Sarah's the worst dog owner that has ever existed. She neglects her dogs. She's lazy. She must have given Maiden no form of discipline whatsoever, no form of training. Dogs th threw up, mm -hmm. oh, but you left it here. Yeah, it was, I think I was working like, yeah, I was working really late and I came home and they were, it was all over here. And that I was three it. days ago, why is it still on here? I haven't cleaned it. It wasn't just crusty poop that hadn't been picked up. It was crusty vomit. Making matters even worse for Sarah is her dog Nibby's aggression. I brought my friend Maddie over um, just to show Victoria how Nibby acts towards guests and friends. So if you tried to stroke her, what yes. would she do? She would, you, you'd see her coming in and then she'd growl and then just nip. How many times has she bitten you then? Once every time I've come over. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'd just come in and be like, see? Okay. I have every confidence that Nibby can become more confident around people, but it's gonna take every effort from Sarah and I don't think she's capable of doing anything at the moment. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Goodbye. Goodbye. See you. These girls have got to get it together. There is a huge problem going on in the house, and it's not just the dogs. Coming up, Victoria unleashes. I'm absolutely appalled and disgusted the way that you are behaving. And has to take extreme measures. Because I would like to take your dogs away from you and give them to people who have the time and attention that they need. Victoria Stilwell has spent a day observing four roommates and their dogs. Now it's time for her to sit down and deliver some bitter truths. All right, 
I have had a very, I have to say, very interesting time observing you. I've been in a lot of houses, a lot of pretty disgusting houses where the dogs um, go to the toilet on the floor. And I have to say that the irresponsibility that you're showing towards your dogs and towards your fellow house members is quite disgusting and I'm appalled. And if I was Susan, you would both be out, out, without a question, with your suitcases on the sidewalk. And you know what? I would also like to take your dogs away from you and give them to people who have the time and attention that they need. There's so much going on here between the relationships between you all. And even just being in the atmosphere is unpleasant. But the dog's living environment is unpleasant too. And the filth that they have to live in, especially your dogs in your room, Sarah, I've never seen a room like that. And it's a health hazard not just for your dogs, but it's a health hazard for you. There is competition between Bailey and Lucas. Now, you do try and clean up. I mean, I wake up in the mornings and the first thing I do when I come down is I look on the corner of this couch. Scent marking is really, really hard to deal with because it's competition. Yeah, always my room. Yeah, and of course, because Lucas is the other male dog. Yeah. Competition with the other males. We need to put other things into place to deter him from doing that. Otherwise, he's just going to continue. Nibby's already bitten and she's going to continue to bite and bite and bite. One day, somebody's going to come in here and that bite is going to be a liability. So we need to get that under control. Yeah. OK. The relationship between you, Jesse, and Susan, I think it has got to the point where it's almost impossible to retrieve. I want to get along with her, and I want to respect her, and I want her to respect me, absolutely. Well, what are you giving her to respect you? You allow your dog mm -hmm. to foul everywhere, to poop on the walls, and you don't clear it up. I don't get it. Mm -hmm. What is inside your head, Jesse, that's making it that when someone tells you to clean up, that you're getting defensive about it because it's your dog that's making the mess? I don't feel that I get defensive about it, but from what fine. I've what well, yes, you do. The way that you talk to Susan shows me the way that you, when I'm talking to Susan, she's breaking down crying, and you two, quite frankly, are sitting on that sofa smirking together is disgusting. You are mid-20s, you are grown women, yet you're behaving worse than children. It's it's witchy, it's viperish, it's 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 disgusting. Come on, you've you all got to grow up because your first thought is for those dogs because they can't look after themselves and you're grown up and you can. You have no sense of concern I understand for or that. respect We've already established whatsoever. that. We've already so, established that. So, so why do you have to continue to bring it up? I've, we've already because gone there, just, we already understand it. It continues so to cool. happen. Because I don't want poop on the wall. Like, then Come clean on. it up. And I'm going to. See, I think respect needs to be earned, Jesse. You know, you've yeah. Certainly your past has not earned you respect. So where do we go from here with the dogs? Are you going to be willing to work with me? Seriously? Yeah. Absolutely. As long as I'm not having to look at this mess and see this mess, I am willing to work with these dogs, absolutely. You are? Yeah. OK. Because I want to have confidence in you. Please show me. Please show me that. Always. Let's do it then. Come on. I've really got my work cut out with all of these girls. If they don't do this, then an already disastrous situation is going to get even worse. To begin, Victoria wants to address the issue that's at the heart of the conflict in this house. OK, I've got somebody that I want you to meet. So Victoria has brought in a professional to show the girls the serious health hazards they are facing. Greg is an environmental consultant, and he specializes in bacteria and molds. And I thought it was really important that he come and he actually do a test, especially your room. And I wanted to tackle your room, Sarah. Greg is going to inspect my room, and I'm really nervous. Greg collects samples from three areas. The comforter, Sarah's pillow, and the wretched underbelly of her bed. First impression is uh, overexposure to fecal matter. I'm very concerned uh, because there's so much waste, there's so much dust. It makes me think it's been there for quite some time. Now, Greg gives the girls his initial assessment. So uh, my, my thoughts for the room that I sampled 
is that uh, until we get back results from the lab, that you not be in that room, okay. that you not take clothing out of that room and use the clothing, and that you shut the door and put some masking tape over the door. OK. Wow, this is serious. My concern about E. coli is that if you do show symptoms, treatment for E. coli can damage your kidney, as well as high blood pressure and, and diseases like that that don't go away. I had no idea things were that out of control in my room. And roundworm, if you ingest it, can affect your brain. The other thing is that the dogs, with their four paws and their furry sides, they're going to lie down. They're going to have an exposure to, to that dog feces probably higher than your exposure. So it could be all over the furniture, too. It could be. Shocked all of us, kind of grossed out by it and afraid for the safety of everybody in the house. Thank you, Greg. OK, thank really, you very much. Really nice interesting. To Great to meet thank you. you. Thank you. Have a good day. Greg coming over and taking samples and all of that is very eye-opening. Bye. It makes me realize, you know, how dangerous it could be and disgusting it is. While they wait a few days for the lab results, there's plenty of work to be done. This house has to be cleaned because I can't even begin to work here until it is. It's become a really serious issue now. There's one thing though, Susan, go and get a coffee, go out. Oh, thank you. Take the weight off your feet because we're doing this ourselves. I don't really see much hope for the situation as far as the other girls go, because it's going to take a miracle. It's all down to us. I gave all the girls buckets with their names on. There was water, there was bleach, there was special animal deodorizer, there was everything that they needed to get that patio clean. Oh, it stinks. It's so bad. It smells so bad. Victoria looked like she was going to vomit. I really don't blame her. No, that is, I'm doing it. Hey. Oh, yeah. To their credit, the girls did buckle down and do it. They made the best out of a bad situation. How much better is this? It's amazing. Awesome. Yeah, it oh, certainly smells amazing. a lot nicer. And this is just the start. Next, Victoria has Sarah tackle the upstairs, while the other two girls work on the living room. smelled pretty bad up there, and it definitely took, you know, a lot of elbow grease to get all the throw up off the patio. An hour later, Victoria comes up to see how Sarah's doing. <gasps> wow. It looks beautiful. It's wonderful. Oh, my gosh. This is, this is your place. I love it. I learned my lesson. <laughs> I'll just say that. OK. Yeah. Don't let it get like that <laughs> <Yeah>. again. <laughs> no. When Susan returns, she gets a peek at the results. Here is your new patio. Oh, my god. Ah, thank you. You're ah. welcome. I'm hoping that cleaning up the patio is the first step for maybe healing some of the broken relationships in this house. Coming up, now that the house is clean, Victoria trains the dogs to go elsewhere. This is the dog's own personal potty. But will the girls keep it up? Now you two are joined at the hip. Victoria Stillwell has brought in an expert to evaluate the unsanitary conditions of the girls' home. Wow, this is serious. Now, the test results are in. I am very concerned with the amount of feces that there are lying around, especially in Sarah's room. I think it could be a potential health hazard. I have the results. I'm very scared about, you know, the samples coming back and what could be in the house for everyone. And uh, fortunately, it's good news, there is no E. coli present Yay. in your room. <laughs> Thank goodness. I hope this near miss has been a wake up call for all of the girls. I hope they never, ever let the house get to the state that it was when I first came here. Keep it clean out of respect for your, your, your roommates and your dogs. Makes me a little angry because they're just so eager that it's almost fake. Despite Susan's reservations, Victoria has a plan to help the girls keep the house clean. This is the dog's own personal potty. I love it. But what I've done is I put a little of uh, one of their poopies on there anyway, mm -hmm. so that their scent is, is on there. 
Hopefully that will entice them when they need to go, yeah. to go in there. Oh my God. Another so change much. that will help keep things sanitary is a regular walking schedule, something Sarah and Jesse have neglected in the past. The whole point of a dog walk is so that your dog can eliminate outside. Even though these dogs are so small, mm -hmm. they still require a lot of exercise. I think Sarah may have the hardest problem just because it's a fact of getting out there and walking her dogs more often, which is hard for her with her schedule. Yeah, let me take um, Maiden. Okay. Walking also provides the opportunity for the dogs to learn impulse control. Now, I wanted to teach them to get the dogs to wait. When all the dogs are on a relaxed leash, then they can cross. Bring her to your Wait. side. Wait. Wait. Good boy. Okay. When you feel it, they're OK, then you cross. Now, again, at this side of the road, I want you to do this. Wait. Lucas. Wait. 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 Lucas, wait. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love it. Back at the house, Victoria tackles the huge challenge of putting an end to Bailey's marking. Scent marking is a really, really difficult behavior to stop, and it relies on a little training, but a lot of management. So I wanted to take Bailey into Jesse's room. This is the place where he marks the most and do a little bit of training there. The vocal interruption is not about scaring the dog. It's about refocusing the dog from a negative behavior onto a more positive one. What you're going to do is this, and it's called the tether method. Uh -huh. Whenever Bailey is out of your room, he needs to be under your active supervision 100% of the time. And you're going to connect it to the belt. When you are not around to actively supervise him, He's back in your bedroom. Okay. Stephanie's going to have to use the tethering method for quite a few months. It's not going to be easy, but it's the only way to deter Bailey from scent marking around your waist. I really hope by using Victoria's techniques for marking that Bailey will think twice before doing it again. Now you two are joined at the hip. <laughs> the next step in breaking Bailey's bad marking habit is to give him a more positive outlet for his energy, something all dogs need. OK, so I brought you to an agility center because I want your dogs to have a lot more mental stimulation than they're getting. So the more training you can do, the better. If I take Bailey here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little treat here. Good boy. Good. Good boy. That's it, another one. Fabulous. Good. Yeah, I was very surprised at how skittish Bailey was at trying to get to the top of the plank. You always see him jumping across the couches. Coming down is tough, too. Yes. Good boy. Encouragement. Come on, baby. That's it. Good boy. Lovely. Come on, baby. Very nice. Very nice. Now loads of praise. Yay! Good job, Bailey. I like seeing the progress that he has with just trying to be challenged and uh, mentally stimulated. All of the dogs take the whole course quite easily. Play. No. Good. Good. Fabulous. Good. Oh, fantastic. How proud are you of her? I'm very proud. Yeah. Oh, hello. Look at that. <laughs> she was like, I'm just going to stay here. <laughs> I was really surprised that the dogs did as well as they did. Just a little bit of teaching, they were amazing. Every single one of these dogs could be an agility dog. So I would just encourage you, this is something that you can do with them. I almost wish Susan was here to see how smart our dogs really can be. Uh, and it would have been exciting for her to be excited with us as well. Coming up, Victoria gets Susan involved in the training. <laughs> uh. But can Nibby's aggression be contained? <laughs> Victoria Stillwell has been working to get Sarah and Jesse more active in caring for their dogs. How proud are you of her? I'm very proud. Now, 
she wants to address Sarah's dog Nibby's most serious problem. Nibby has found a great way to deal with the people that come and try and touch her, and that's to bite them. And it works. It makes people go away from her. So she's going to do it again and again and again. What we want to teach her now is that approaching hands are a good thing rather than a bad thing. And the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to teach her the touch command. Dogs are very inquisitive anyway, and they like to go towards things. Ooh, fascinating. Let's go check it out. And when she does, she gets a treat. When you stimulate appetite, that changes the way the brain reacts, and therefore the way the dog feels. Touch. Good girl. As she goes towards to touch my hand, I tell her to touch. Touch. Now, when she doesn't do it, she's working out. She's not going to get a treat until she does it. So let's just see. If she doesn't do it for a while, what I'll do is I'll put my hand back and, and give it to her again and see what she does. Touch. Good girl. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to start standing. I'm going to walk around a little bit. Touch. Good girl. OK, Susan, would you like a go? <laughs> Uh, I think Susan was really nervous when she found out she had to be working with Nibby. I know she's been bit before and was probably really scared about it. Touch. When you, she doesn't do it, just go, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Touch. Beautiful. Good girl. I think that was the first time she's ever made a positive connection with the dog. Touch. Good, Good. girl. I think that by working with Nibby, I probably showed Sarah that I do care. I have a bit of a softer side when it comes to her dogs, and I think it'll help our relationship. Then Victoria moves the training to Sarah's lap, a place where Nibby feels very protective. So now I'm, I'm conditioning her to see my approach. Hi, Sarah, touch. Good girl. I want Sarah to teach her guests to do what I did, to approach her, say, hi, Sarah, and then say, touch, extend their hands so Nibby can touch them and, they, and she can get a treat. Hey, Sarah, touch. Good girl. Watching Nibby learn, I just, I love it. It's, it's really amazing. Now, it's Maiden's turn to get some basic training. I don't know what Victoria has planned for Maiden, but she's a maniac, so we'll see what happens. When you do an action, like a sit, and you put a word to that action, and the dog gets rewarded for doing that action, the dog sees that there are pleasurable consequences to that action. She is working her brain at the moment as she's trying to find out, how do I get this woman to give me this treat in her hand? Good girl. Very good. I caught that sit. It took her a while to learn that the only way she'd get a treat from me is if she put her bottom on the ground. But once she got it, she was a demon. Fantastic. That's it. Good girl. Now I'm putting the word to the actual action of the sitting. That's it. Good girl. How is it for you seeing your little girl learn? I can't believe she learned it that fast. I never thought I'd see the day where a maiden would actually just sit still. Sit. Now it's Sarah's turn to try. Sorry. Good girl. It's a little bit different for her because now you're doing it. Yeah. So she has to, okay, work out. I have to do it when she asks me to do it as well. I want Sarah to work with Maiden every day on the sick command in different areas of the house. Good girl, good girl. I'm gonna leave you for a little while you've got a lot of work to do. I want you to respect each other. I want you to respect the dogs. I don't know if the other girls are going to uh, keep up the training that Victoria showed them, but I know that I'm going to do my part in cleaning up the messes. I just hope they don't take advantage of it. Don't go back to what you liked before. I don't want to see one piece of poop, one bit of urine on the floor, nothing. OK, do you think you can do that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I have a worry that when I'm gone, these girls will get lazy again because laziness is their downfall. I hope they don't, and I want them to prove me wrong. Coming up, while Victoria is away, the girls try to make amends. So do you like it? Does it look good?
but will Susan forgive and forget? Do you guys plan on cleaning this one also? You should stop bringing up the past and move on. Get over it, Susan. Having sorted out the arguments amongst four quarreling roommates, Victoria has left for a few days so they can continue training on their own. So far, everything is coming together well. Accidents in the house have become less frequent, and all the dogs have now taken to the porch potty. The porch potty is going great. Um, Maiden is a whiz at it. Even Lucas and Bailey know to go out there now, too. Even with the occasional slip up, the girls have been making a conscious effort to clean it immediately. Everyone has made a big difference in stepping up and cleaning when we see messes. The girls have been doing a great job in cleaning up after the dogs. Accident. Even I have seen a mess on the floor, and I've taken the initiative to clean it up, so I think we're all doing our part. Sarah has taken the cleaning in her room to the next level by getting her mattress professionally cleaned. That's pretty gross. And to prevent any more hard-to-reach messes, Sarah has also blocked access under her bed. I taped blackboard under my bed so Maiden can't get under there anymore and there won't be any more mess. Later in the week, Victoria checks on their progress. I'm looking forward to seeing if the girls have been keeping up with the training. Today, the dog owners have invited Susan to join them at the Agility Center in hope of building up her relationship with the dogs. Good girl! Even though Susan's not really a dog person, she really stepped up at the Agility Center and Maiden really responded to her. Good girl. Good girl. I love the way that the girls have involved Susan in the agility. This is such a great way for her to get a connection with the dogs and maybe the relationship with the girls will be better too. Whenever she's at home, Stephanie is continuing to use the tether method with Bailey, keeping a close watch on any signs he might mark. Hey, no, no. Great. Stephanie's now using the tethering method, and she can now stop no. Bailey as soon as he goes to Mark. In time, this should stop the behavior altogether. Betty! Hello. Next, Sarah has invited her friend over to work with Nibby on the touch training. Nibby usually bites me, and uh, I'm not too sure if uh, she'll bite me again. So I feel still a little scared. Still feel nervous. You're going to have a treat. And you're gonna hold it behind your back and you're gonna open your hand and you're gonna say touch and if she touches you with her nose and you give her the treat and say good girl. Okay. Maybe, maybe. Touch. Hey, good girl. Wow. Okay, one more time. Maybe. Touch. Good girl. Wow, that's completely night and day. Good girl. She wouldn't even come to me before. Good girl. That whole touch training worked really well. And I was really impressed, really amazed. Come here. Oh, good oh, girl. You can sit with me. You gonna play now? Nibby is making so much progress. By inviting her to touch, you're taking pressure off her so she's less likely to react and bite. Jesse and Sarah have also been taking their dogs on more regular walks that has led to a brand new problem with Nibby and Maiden. I'm having a really hard time with Nibby and Maiden crossing other dogs' paths, especially our neighbors. It's very embarrassing. They immediately start barking and they try to go get them. I like the fact that you're walking the dogs more often, but I see now that you've got a major situation going on with the neighbors' dogs. We have to nip that in the bud before it gets any worse. As a gesture, Sarah and Jesse have taken it upon themselves to get one of Susan's sofas professionally cleaned. I'm so pleased to see that the dog owners have stepped up and paid for the cleaning. This is a real gesture of good faith. We're about to show Susan the couch that was clean, and I'm really excited to see what she thinks. So do you like it? Does it look good? Looks a lot better, yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. Do you guys plan on cleaning this one also? Yeah, we will definitely clean it. Okay. Oh, I'll believe it when I see it. When we brought in the couches to show Susan that we had cleaned one of them and we were gonna get the other one clean, she was completely negative and didn't even care. We've tried to make efforts. We're cleaning this couch and the only thing you have to say is something negative. It's really difficult at this point for me to remain positive and put faith in the other roommates. All trust is gone, and it's difficult to get that back. Well, you have an attitude about it. That's why. It's only me, right? It's only me. No, it is. Everyone else leaves it alone. You don't. You yeah, always don't. come back with something. Because you constantly bicker me. 
constantly. Constantly. No, I just ask you to clean up your messes. And I do. And I have. And you do for the last week. Yeah, and guess what? I will continue to do it, and you should stop bringing up the past and move on. Get over it. No, it takes time to build well, trust. Okay. A week isn't enough okay. time to build Apparently, trust. Apparently, I know that. I know that. I thought we'd sorted this whole problem out. You all need to stop bickering and put the past behind you, otherwise you're going to be back to square one. Coming up, Susan is still leery of her roommate's false promises. Do you still not trust? Um, you still don't trust them. Can Victoria get the girls on the same page once and for all? She needs to see that these girls are trying now. Victoria is returning in hopes of settling the dispute between Susan and her roommates once and for all. Hey, hello. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Hi. When I walked in the room, I saw the nice, clean sofa that the girls had paid for to get cleaned. And, hey, it felt good to sit on it. Now, with regards to, to I saw what happened with the sofa. So fantastic to get this sofa cleaned, Yay. and it does look it's amazing. Going, huh? Way better. Amazing. Yeah. Way, way better. But tell me about your reaction. I'm just kind of upset that it was a halfway job. There have been a lot of false promises in the past, and I don't want this to be one of them. Do you still not trust? Um, you still don't trust them. But have you said, though, when you get the money, yeah, you'll, you'll get it together? Her. You yeah, promised? We yeah. All I'm right. I think she needs to see that these girls are trying now, not just with cleaning the sofa, but with cleaning up after their dogs. The proof is the girls taking positive action. How much more do you need? I don't think anything will ever get better unless you try and let go a bit of the past. Well, the past keeps repeating itself, so right. how am I supposed to do that? And I never received an apology. Ever. I'm extremely sorry for anything that I've caused you, whether it be about the dogs or about any of us. Like anything treating you bad or the wrong tone or anything. I've told you that before and I am I never heard that from you. If you haven't, then I am extremely sorry. Okay. I really appreciate am. It. And I and I mean it. So I'm sorry. I appreciate it. I'm sorry if I've ever, you know, offended you in any way. I appreciate it. That means a okay. lot. Thank you. I feel like the apology is definitely the first step that needs to be taken. It's a stepping stone. If they continue to do what they've been doing, relationships might be rebuilt and things might change, and it just takes time. With the past hopefully behind them, Victoria wants to address the newest problem with Maiden and Nibby's reaction to the neighbor dogs. The neighbor walks her dogs practically at the same time that the girls walk their dogs. And when those dogs see each other, all hell breaks loose. Victoria wants to work with each dog individually, gradually desensitizing them to their neighbors. First up, Maiden. Okay, Hi, baby. Come on. Let's go. Come on, Nibby. Nibby, baby girl. Come on. I'm really excited to work with Victoria and Sarah and Jesse's dogs. I really hope it's going to improve the situation with their dogs and my dogs. I want you to keep walking, and I'm just going to follow you, okay? Keep up with me, because okay. we're going to be you know, walking pretty fast. I want to make a sight of the neighbor's dogs uh, a pleasure. When they're seeing each other's presence, good things are happening to them as they're walking together and they're sniffing, they're looking at other things, they're hearing other things, so they have less time to be reactive. Now we're greeting, very good. Hi. Very good. Now she's running around because she's getting excited and she wants to play. Oh. <laughs> Ready? Now it's Nibby's turn. Nibby is obviously the harder one. Let's see how she does. Come on. Keep walking, keep walking. Come on, come on, Jax. Come on. Nibby gets very tense in front of the other dogs. She's a very unconfident dog. This is really good. They're figuring each other out now. Nibby's now going in for a smell. Good. Good, good girl, boy, Nibby. Very good. Yeah, this is awesome. This exposure, <laughs> that's what they need. Yeah. When you got an unconfident dog, you allow them to go in the back end first. Don't do the front end, back end. Smell the bottom and you will not get bitten. For the final step, Victoria has Jesse bring Maiden out again and adds Lucas to the mix. <laughs> Look at them all. Look at them all. Five of them. Oh, so cute. You guys are cute. It took me a while to get here, but the ending result was fantastic. <laughs>
All right, I am gonna leave you now. And I think, you know, you continue to respect each other, respect your living environment, respect your dogs. And I hope that at least it quells the arguments about the dogs. If you're gonna argue about anything else, at least it's not gonna be over the dogs. Okay? Thank you, Thank you guys for so being awesome. Thank you. Great. I think all the girls are gonna have to step up to the plate and take responsibility for their past actions. All right, bye guys. Bye. bye. Thank you for coming. I really hope that they can do it, but I think there's a long road to healing. Since Victoria's left, everybody's been taking a really proactive approach to cleaning the house. I'm so pleased to see that Sarah, Jesse, and Stephanie were true to their word. This shows me that they're committed to making the situation with Susan a lot better. It's okay. Sarah and I have been meeting with our neighbor, Kim, and working on the aggressiveness of all the dogs, and it's going really well, and it's really exciting to see. I think we've all done a really good job, like, cleaning up, yeah. and, like, everything's gotten so much better. Thanks for watching. If you love It's Me or the Dog and want more dog training tips and tricks, visit my official site, Positively.com. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a dog trainer, check out the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Links to both sites are in the description. I'll see you online.